in the Yukon province of northern Canada in thawed ice patches, archaeologists found ancient tools whose age reaches back 6,000 years. In addition, the remains of unusual giant animals that lived tens or even hundreds of thousands of years ago were also found in the ice. But artifacts preserved in permafrost can carry not only scientific value, but also something creepier. Among the indigenous population of northern Canada, there have long been legends about creatures that have thawed out of the ice and hunted people. And recent archaeological finds suggest that these myths may prove to be true, at least partially. So, should we be afraid of the Yukon melting ice? In 2018, during an expedition to an ice patch near the Yukon community of Carcross, a helicopter pilot discovered a strange wooden object in the snow. When the heritage manager, Jennifer Herkes, approached the find, she realized she was looking at a full wooden atlatl spear about 6,000 years old. The spear, about 2 meters long, was perfectly preserved. The wooden base remained intact and feathers could be seen in the tail of the dart. It even had traces of the sap they would have used as glue to attach the stone point to the wood shaft. Such tools were used by locals to hunt caribou thousands of years ago. They were popular until the year 847, when they were finally replaced by bows and arrows. Such spears were thrown with the help of a special device called an atlatl. It was usually made of wood or deer antlers and used during hunting. The atlatl functions as a lever. A hunter puts a spear on it, swings it, and makes a sharp throw, tightly holding the atlatl handle in their hand. This dramatically increases the force of the throw and allows the spear to reach speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. In this case, the hunter can hit a target the size of a dinner plate from about 20 meters. The oldest atlatl found so far is about 4,300 years old. Old. However, not only weapons and tools are found in the Yukon ice, but also rare household items. One of the most remarkable finds is a leather moccasin over 1,500 years old. It was also found in the mountains near an ice patch. It's believed that the moccasin belonged to one of the caribou hunters. But what makes this find special? You see, leather, wood, and other organic materials decompose pretty quickly, and finding an almost undamaged item is a rarity. But in the so-called ice patches of the Yukon, which are included in the UNESCO World Heritage List, time seems to stand still. Unlike glaciers, which can slide down the slopes, the patches do not move. The ice in them has layered over millennia, and the artifacts buried under it remain intact. Due to global warming, the ice has begun to melt, and ancient tools end up on the surface in the same condition they froze thousands of years ago. But local legends say something much more sinister may be lurking in the ice. After all, the remains of prehistoric monsters were often found in the ice patches. The remains of ancient megafauna and giant prehistoric animals are often found in the Yukon Territory. For example, the Megalonyx, a giant sloth that lived during the Pleistocene epoch. It reached a length of 3 meters and weighed about a thousand kilograms. Fortunately, giant sloths were herbivores, otherwise other species would have no chance of survival. And who do you think this skeleton belongs to? Although it looks like a saber-toothed tiger or a prehistoric bear, these are actually the remains of a giant beaver. It was almost two meters long and weighed about a hundred kilograms. The giant beaver is considered the largest rodent in history. Scientists suggest that unlike modern beavers, it didn't build dams. The analysis of the teeth found in the Yukon showed that giant beavers didn't chew wood at all and fed on water plants like modern muskrats. Why they needed those enormous incisors is still a mystery. The remains found in Hunker Creek in 2008 raise even more questions. Back then, gold miners
miners found a pile of bones of various Ice Age animals aged about 125,000 years. Almost all of them belonged to the local megafauna, except for a few unusual specimens. After a detailed study, scientists concluded that those bones belonged to an extinct camel species. The thing is that the camel family actually originated in North America about 40 million years ago. Over time, their genus was split into camels and llamas. The ancestors of camels migrated across the Bering Strait, and the llama predecessors moved to South America. But the find from Hunter Creek proves that some of the camels migrated to the North American continent and remained there until the end of the Ice Age. At the same time, the extreme cold of the Yukon didn't seem to bother them at all. But camels aren't the weirdest finding of gold diggers in the Yukon. In 1897, in the midst of the Klondike gold rush, the French writer Georges Dupuy traveled to Partridge Creek along with other gold miners. One day, during moose hunting, Dupuy and his group noticed strange footprints. None of the hunters could determine which animal they belonged to. When a group led by the rider followed the footsteps, they ended up on the cliff's edge. Looking down, they saw an enormous, great black creature trying to climb the slope. According to Dupuy, it was 15 meters long and five and a half meters high. The creature had a rhinoceros-like horse on its head, a crest ran along its back, and its entire body was covered with bristles. The writer was convinced he had met a living dinosaur that day. According to Dupuy, in 1908, he received a letter from a priest friend who claimed to have seen the dinosaur again in the Partridge Creek area of the Yukon. It ran across the frozen surface of the stream, holding a dead caribou in its teeth. The creature moved at a speed of about 16 kilometers per hour. In addition, according to the priest, the air temperature that day dropped to minus 45 degrees Celsius, and the dinosaur's bristles were covered with frost. The same year, Georges Dupuy published a story about the Yukon dinosaur in two magazines in France and Britain, and received a barrage of criticism. British naturalist and geologist Richard Lidecker stated that large dinosaurs lived only in warm climates, and none of them could survive in the harsh northern climate. But almost 50 years later, British journalist Harold Wilkins, in his book Secret Cities of Old South America, suggested that Dupuy's encounter with a living dinosaur might well have been real. According to him, paleontologists may be mistaken when claiming that dinosaurs went extinct with the onset of the Ice Age. Wilkins believed that some species could adapt to new environments and climate patterns, and a couple of decades later, his words were confirmed. In the 1970s, Canada's Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology in Alberta conducted excavations at Pipestone Creek. There, paleontologists discovered the remains of 27 dinosaurs aged about 72 and a half million years. Scientists believe that these dinosaurs belong to a previously unknown species of Pachyrhinosaurus. Their distinguishing features are bony frills on their backs and rhinoceros-like horns. The description of Pachyrhinosaurus is reminiscent of the creature Dupuy once met. In not so long ago, in 2009, rare dinosaur remains were unearthed in the Yukon itself. Those finds are about 65 million years old. David Evans, an associate curator of vertebrate paleontology with the Royal Ontario Museum, believes that one of the two bones found may belong to the Hadrosauridae, while the other may belong to prehistoric crocodiles or turtles. So the story of gold diggers about encounters with dinosaurs may turn out to be true. However, in this case, aboriginal tribal legends about the experience of meeting ape-like creatures could also be based on real events. In the past, the indigenous people of the Yukon believed in a race of human-like monsters with tails. They supposedly inhabited that area before the appearance of humans. 
After that, the monsters moved into burrows and caves in the mountains near the upper Tanana River Valley. But the native Atna people, who live on the Alaskan-Yukon border, still believe in the existence of the so-called monkey people. The Atna call them set -ayani. Those creatures are believed to be cannibals, and meeting them never ends well. In the early 20th century, when the tribes settled along the banks of the Copper River, their people began to disappear. At first, they were children who went too far from the encampment. Then, the women who picked berries in the woods near the settlement began to disappear without a trace. Over time, even the elders and hunters were afraid to go far from the fires when night fell. According to the missionary Arthur Wright, who lived in Atna territory at the time, the mysterious disappearances began after a dog with a fish tail in its mouth came to the encampment. The fact is that even though the Atna people lived on the banks of the river, they did not fish in it. They lived only by hunting caribou. The tribe concluded that another group of people had settled somewhere nearby and sent several hunters up the river to scout out, but they never returned. After that event, one of the Atna young warriors noticed a strange creature in the woods. According to him, it was the size of a human and moved on its hind legs. The monster was covered with fur from head to toe and swung its long monkey-like tail. The Atna hunters decided to hunt down the creature. When they followed the footprints along the Copper River, they noticed some caves in the cliff near which the traces broke off. Then the men lit fires near the caves, smoked out the creatures, and killed them. The Atna stories could have remained legends if not for the missing person statistics. In the Yukon, where the population is only around 40,000 people, in 2021 alone, 64 people disappeared without a trace. Besides, stories about ape-like creatures are also popular among other Yukon indigenous tribes. For example, among the Dene people, there are frequent descriptions of hairy cannibals with red eyes and long muscular arms. They're called the Nakani. The Dene have stories about how the Nakani settled near their villages and stole women, children, and lone hunters. According to legends, those creatures fed on people and barehandedly ripped off the heads of those who tried to resist them. The Nakani terrorized entire settlements. In 1876, a French missionary, Emile Petitot, who lived in the territory of the Dene people, wrote about the fear that spread among the locals every summer. According to him, when the Dene suspected an Akani was lurking nearby, entire Dene bands would immediately abandon their camps and seek shelter on a nearby lake island. The tribe believed that the Nakani lived in the Nahani Valley, east of the Yukon Territory. The Dene still consider this land cursed. On the one hand, this may seem like mere superstition, but on the other hand, 44 people have gone missing in the valley in the last hundred years alone. In addition, headless remains are constantly found in Nahani, for which one of the gorges was dubbed the Headless Valley. This place gained creepy fame in the early 20th century at the height of the Klondike Gold Rush. In 1908, the bodies of two gold diggers, brothers Willie and Frank McLeod, were discovered in Nahani. Two years before that, they took a canoe upstream to the Nahani Valley. Their remains were found in the encampment, and both bodies were beheaded. In 1917, the body of Swiss prospector Martin Jorgensen was found in Nahani. He had been beheaded and his cabin had been burned to the ground. Ten years later, the body of a criminal known as the Yukon Fisher was found in the same area. His head was also separated from his body. According to one of the legends, the ape-like creatures descended from ordinary monkeys that came to the Yukon from Europe back in Columbus's time. The animals adapted to the cold climate and eventually evolved into demi-humans. But what if these creatures are actually far more ancient? 
Notably, the gold miners' stories about ape-like creatures and dinosaurs date back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Just in this period, according to scientists, the temperature on our planet began to rise and the glaciers started to melt, revealing to researchers the hidden ancient artifacts and remains of megafauna and perhaps something else. But even assuming that ape-like creatures could indeed thaw out of the ice, they wouldn't survive in the harsh climate of the Yukon and the Nahani Valley. Unless there's a tropical corner lost in the Canadian mountains. The first eyewitness accounts of such a lost world in the Nahani Valley emerged back in the 1920s. At that time, in the Valdez Minor newspaper published in Alaska, there was an article describing the discovery of two gold diggers, Hancock Russell and Jack Lee. As the miners were climbing a high snow-covered mountain pass, they noticed a green valley below, partially hidden by fog. When Russell and Lee went down to the valley, they felt they were overdressed. According to them, they found geysers and hot springs there. In 1925, a similar story was told to the Alaska Weekly newspaper by a mining engineer, Frank Perry. He also discovered an abnormally warm valley obscured by the fog. According to Perry, he noticed that the rivers there are fed by hot springs, which are abundant in the valley. Due to this, a sufficiently high temperature was maintained there, providing favorable conditions for the growth of giant ferns, nettle, and even lianas, and hundreds of caribou, mountain sheep, and other animals grazed among the plants. At the same time, Perry noted that local tribes avoided that valley. That same year, the story of the Royal Canadian Air Force Wing Commander John Williams appeared in the press. During an aerial search expedition, the crew headed by the commander noticed a green valley in the snow and headed toward it to get a closer look. Williams claimed to have spent around three months there feeding on local caribou. He also recounted numerous hot springs that maintained the temperature in the valley and enormous plants that grew there. In addition, the commander noted that he felt a sulfur smell in the air. He also suggested that the area might be a giant crater of an extinct volcano. It seems that in such conditions, ape-like creatures could feel fine even during the severe Canadian winter. And with the onset of summer, they could leave the valley and turn the life of the indigenous people into a nightmare. But despite eyewitness accounts and the stories of the indigenous population, the tropical valley hasn't yet been found. Presumably, it's located within the Nahani National Park Reserve. But there is an inconsistency. This reserve doesn't have a single volcano, so there's no crater where the valley could be located. Whereas Nahani is full of hot springs. Moreover, although a tropical valley among the ice seems unbelievable, it may well exist. At least because there's a real desert in the ice. I'm referring to the Carcross Desert in the southern Yukon. It's considered the smallest desert in the world. Its area is only 2.6 square kilometers. The Carcross Desert during the last glacial period on the site of an ancient lake. Despite its small size, it has sand dunes and an arid climate. Rainfall here is several times less than in the rest of the Yukon, only 50 centimeters per year. But what if we're wrong in thinking giant ape-like creatures need a warm climate to survive? In fact, for the past 150 years, scientists have repeatedly found evidence that primates, closely related to apes, once lived in northern Canada. Back in the 1870s, they discovered there the remains of Notharctus, the creature superficially similar to a modern lemur. In 2008, the bones of Tile Hardina, an early marmoset-like primate, were found in North America. So, can it be that the legends of the Atna and Dene are no myth? What do you think? Write in the comments.